Is this something I can pick up? No. I'm supposed to ask you something, sir. Hold on, wandering man. How can I help you? Um. Kuno told me you're supposed to know about the armor. <laughs> The little boy had the good on his promise. What promise? To get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. Uh, the probe into the armor, what did you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. <laughs> what else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. What about helmet, cuirass, gauntlets? What about leggings? Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I did. Okay. Going to find one piece of it, one is enough. I'm gonna find all the pieces. All of it? There are junior officers out there, eager to prove themselves. I would leave some for them. And I would leave the boots to processing, but okay. Let's find all of it. <laughs> Why not? It's implied. He finds it unlikely that you will succeed in this. Okay. A mesquite epic then, all across Martinez. I hope it will be a real bonanza for you. So Kuno used us to scare you? It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. <laughs> Alright, thanks for your help. No problem. If you see that kid, Thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. <laughs> he is sincerely grateful. He is not tracking down pieces of armor right now. Alright. Good talking to you. Okay. We have a lot that we need to do. Uh, we need to go to the bookstore. We need to talk with Kim on the balcony, which is still not quite time yet and we need to what's the other thing oh we need we need to go up on the balcony and get our coat and talk to the union leader it's getting pretty late to do things at this point so I guess I think the bookstore and getting the corpse stored away is probably what we want to do next. I pick I can't pick those bottles up. I really want to. Also, I noticed when I was looking at this, this gives me all motoristics is raised by one, and that's motoristics was the one that I put the initial one in. So that's actually I said that this wasn't that great in the zoom out distance, who cares? But that could be very useful for me. So uh, I probably might want to keep that. So let's pop into this bookstore. Maybe? Oh, it might be too late for this bookstore. It might be too late. So maybe I should walk around. Oops. Oh, that makes me go faster. Oh, I was trying to hit tab. Oops. And I hit something else instead. Don't ask me where I'm going. 
Where am I going? Okay, let's click with the mouse because clearly I don't know where I'm going. What's this? A lonely cormorant surveys the sea. Oh, indifferent to your approach. Can I pick these up? Oh, I can pick those up. Which means, okay, I should have been able to pick up those other bottles. Let's, let's go back to those other bottles. They weren't glowing. So apparently not Altair glows. Interesting. So I gotta pay attention to what the mouse looks like. Can't pick that up. What about this stuff? No? Okay. There's bottles up here. Aha! Okay. Take. Take. There's nothing in there. I got some more change. I think I could buy a raincoat now. I don't know what good a raincoat's gonna do me, but maybe it'll do me some good. And time, as far as I understand, doesn't progress unless you talk to people. So if we don't find anyone to talk to, maybe exploring town for a little while. Ooh, it's a boat! The belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted. Ooh, what's this? Oh, is this how we get to talk to Kuno's dad? I don't think we want to talk to Kuno's dad. I think we decided that that would be a bad thing. Is Kuno- Oh, there she is. Is she gonna yell at us? Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep? No. Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. <laughs> Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Her voice becomes almost inaudible. Why would you even say that? Are you sleeping right now? Sorry for sneaking up on you. Yeah. Are you sleeping right now? Don't get fucking clever with me, pig! You think you're so clever! She hisses. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I really didn't want to go talk to Kuno's dad. I think I'll get my butt kicked. Chairs and tables eaten by rain and rot. What's this? Ooh, what's this? An orange bum hat. Plus one reaction speed. But minus one to rhetoric. What's this? Just a closed door. But you look at it suspiciously. Barrels are half full of rainwater. I can't get up there, can I? No. I clicked on it. Can't get into the greenhouse? Okay. I guess we're gonna go talk to Kuno's dad. This might... This might end very poorly for us, so let's just quick save. In case this ends in disaster. Garden hose won't be of use until the snow melts. Ooh. Balcony with a view to the yard and the hanging. Smoker up there could be a witness. Talk to him. There's a smoker up there? Hello, zoom out. Can I talk to him from down here? Yeah, no. What's that noise down there? Hi. Can I go in the store? There must be another way into the building. Okay. I thought this was going to take us in there, but apparently it won't. How do I get in? Maybe we won't go talk to Kuno's dad. Now they show up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What's this? Ooh. What's this? Magnesium. Ooh. 
This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Why? Oh, it's impossible. It's a white check, though. Why am I looking at it? In the dimming light, some things become clearer. Well, I don't know. So I guess I'll come back to it? Or should I check it now to know that I need to come back to it later? Because maybe I'll forget. You have no clue. It's just a wall. Well? So many walls all over Martinez. Yes. Weather worn, cracked, their paint peeling. Hmm. Shiver said something to us. Okay. Must be another way into the building, he says. Kuno said bang on the door until the lady shows up. Alright, well. And then I can't get into this door even though I want to. Oh, probably from up there. I can probably get into the building from up there. Okay. Alright, let's try that maybe. Plastic tear. Okay. Cape Side Apartments. Rue de Saint Ghislaine, Roundabout North. Inside the frame of a motorcycle in repair. Up here, Pico. The tools used to disassemble it. I'll talk to you in a minute. I gotta pick up this trash. There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? Yeah, you better keep walking. I don't know that I can talk to you from down here. The streets oh. will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The girl stares at the sailboat by the pier. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? Apparently it'll flow red with paint. I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. Really, girl? I'm just asking your name. Let's start with your blood type, go from there. Yeah, when were you last tested? Look, we just want to know your name. No need to get defensive. And here I was, trying to be polite. I don't think you Just were. can't win with you, pig. I really don't think you were trying. She's grown frustrated with her work and welcomes the opportunity to challenge authority in other ways. Despite the sass, she puts the brush aside. You keep looking off to the side, what are you looking at? What are you doing on the wall? Do you know anything about the recent murder? Let's ask the first question. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. What? Cindy the Skull nods disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat docked next to the pier. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. I believe this is the rich person we need to talk to. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago. Two days travel away from Rivershot. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. That is definitely the rich person. Who is she? Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. Oh. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. He nods in her direction. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. <laughs> Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Okay. You gave me permission, Kim. Just saying. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. What are you doing on the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aerial graffiti visible from low orbit. 
I don't think you have enough space for that. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. She studies the wall, suddenly pensive. So you don't know what to write. Have you ever tried your hand at graffiti When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs round here, though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. Why are you so committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know. Summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Mm -hmm. I have an opinion on this. You want to hear it? Yeah. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. <sighs> I'm going to have to stop you. This is hooliganism. Actually, I don't have an opinion. I lied. Yeah, public art, whatever. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me. Now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. You're welcome. She means the opposite. <laughs> You've lessened her desire to deface the building. Really? You know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. She wrinkles her nose. Actually... There is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. <laughs> we weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Can you tell us something about the murder victim's missing armor instead? What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Isn't armor art for the, uh, for the body? Ugh, all right. Sad piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military-grade handwear. Look cute as hell. Aww. If you haven't been there, the village is a shithole down the coast from the main plaza. Have a good time. She waves her hand in a general westward direction. And there's a little girl wearing gloves there? No, no. That's all the snitching Cindy the Skull does for today. Actually, I don't even know why I told you what I just told you. <laughs> I have a weakness for animals. It's the animal thing again. Damn it. She looks at you a little sad suddenly. Or a weakness for police officers, miss. Thank you either way. He makes a note in his notebook. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Interesting. All right. Auto save. Thank you. Will this take us up to where she is? A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. Oh. It's locked. Knock. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. Knock again. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. This must be the... Oh, this is the cleaning lady. This is the police. Open the door. <laughs> the police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. In the hallway echoes with her cackle. I'm not joking. No. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. She trails off, leaving the sentence unfinished. Backyard door. There must be another entrance to the east. Kim, tell her we're real policemen. Madam, I assure you, we are real police officers. The lieutenant repeats dutifully. There is no reply. Just faint sweeping sounds inside. Okay. So we gotta find the other, the other entrance. Take that. Take that, more magnesium. Can I look 
at this. Looks like there was more construction here once, decades ago. Where are you going, Kim? Docking reserved for residents of Rue de Saint Clay, 33A. Shadows on the water, green plants under the calm surface. Your room in the whirling isn't much bigger than the sloop. This is worth more than you'll ever earn in all your life. Let's say before we talk to this lady. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good evening, officers. I'm Joyce. She extends her hand in greeting. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. She steps closer and holds out her hand over the railing. Joyce L. What does the L stand for? What exactly is the RCM? I remember hearing it from somewhere. What gave us away? Yeah, what gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Are you serious? Relax. She meant it in jest. Okay, I'll shake her hand then. I'm glad to see you here. Her grip is tight and cold. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. Gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. <laughs> There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. This is a tactic. Kim. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation. And the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. She turns to you unfazed. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition. But she appears helpful. You're on a boat. Why, yes I am. <laughs> she looks at the deck under her feet. Green and white sails flutter overhead. Not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? There is a pinch of defensiveness in her voice. But it is playful. Wait, we're on an archipelago? <laughs> looks around. Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. She raises her brow. Kalu? I thought we were in Revachol. We are. And the city of Revachol is on the island of Lakayu. I still haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Kupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. The lieutenant becomes defensive. It's for crossing long distances in the greater Revachol industrial harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol, between the city and the islands. The woman pats the cabin hardtop. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Why? Why what? Stop thinking. <laughs> Take her down. It'll come off like I'm envious, and I'm not. Why am I even thinking about this? I have police work to do. Actually, yes, I need... I'm not... I'm not envious. Parentheses lie. You're not? Okay, then. Just keep on admiring the boat, then. Unburdened by envy. <laughs> Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. The word it feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. That's cool, but your boat really needs a name. Okay. How about Cordelechi 19? Why? She taps on the side of the boat, makes a hollow sound. Because it was manufactured in Revachol East by a company called Cordelechi, and its hull is 19 paces long. <sighs> How about Sleek Fish? How about the X something? 
How about Dolores? How about the X something? The X something? The X what? The executor. Oh, I do like the sound of that. <laughs> it sounds so decisive. So, uh... A smirk passes her face. Powerful. Okay, what kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. How do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Her lips curl into a wry smile. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the mother we're investigating. <laughs> I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Do you have a license for this boat? Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. <laughs> the crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Her nonchalance might be related to something called the Wayfarer Act. A law that says she doesn't need a license. Sly Fox, you're not aggressive enough to harass her further on this. Hmm. I think I have a handle on the boat thing. Good. She takes a sip of her thermal cup. Tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. So what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. She points to the small dots on the horizon. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revisholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. Who are the other Indo tribes? Son Baptiste. L-U-M, an unknown entity known as Brightest Star. You're in good company, it seems. Why, thank you. How much money does Wild Pines have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. A billion? What exactly is a billion? <laughs> it's a number, officer. A big one. What, what is it made of? It's made of one thousand millions. A million is made of a thousand thousands. Wow. Twenty billion is a large number, but the conglomerate employs seventy-two thousand people. They all need to be paid. Then there are capital improvements, interest payments. A wave hits the sloop. She grasps the mainstay for balance. A conglomerate the size of the wild pines is like a shark. There we go. If it stops moving, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It's a tremendous responsibility. And how much of that 20 billion do those 72 people, 72,000 people get? Where do you get all these billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantanga on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. Probably helps to start out with a real, with a royal monopoly. You know more than you let on. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. She takes a sip and looks you over afresh. What does a huge system want with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners, who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? She gives you a little smile. 
8% of all cargo in the world? There are no minor cogs in the system. Each terminal must be accounted for, lest the entire system break. Every hiccup in such a system means thousands lose their jobs, the world over. I'm here to assure that doesn't happen. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. Okay, so we've hit this, which is what I was waiting for. We, I believe we can come back to this interview later. You seem rich, can I have some money? Is what you want to say, <laughs> but it isn't that easy, is it? Why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. Nice fabrics. Why, yes. Tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat, almost rustic in its simplicity. A silk shirt and matching scarf around her gentle throat. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible. Within reason. Yeah, so? Now look at you. You misery-clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too. I'm not ashamed. What is this feeling? I've never felt it before. I'm a goddamn working man. I'm not ashamed to take this leash for some dough. Hmm. Um. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I want to click on this, but I don't know if I'll come back to these options. You think your little communism <laughs> protects you from this feeling? No. The more demeaning it is to grovel at her feet. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, Please don't hesitate to ask. Oh, I can actually roll it. <gasps> this is a white check. You may retry it. Herd of billions. Hold on. I'm going to save. Of course, detective. Take care. Save the game. Save the game. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Well, yeah. you're doing it. Yeah! Really put your back into it. Yell it from the top of your lungs. <laughs> money! <laughs> help me, I'm poor. I need money to keep living. <laughs> oh. Let's attempt some politeness. Can I have some money, ma'am? Of course. How much do you need? Oh, God. She nods. She doesn't even smile. She's surprisingly nonchalant about this. Could it be that she somehow knows more about your predicament than she's letting on? I need a billion real. How about 130? That'll pay for my damages. That's a good sum. Not too small. Not fantastically large. <gasps> She reaches into her raincoat and pulls out a zip bag. In it, you see paper notes arranged like black gills. She removes a few notes Holy and hands frick. them to you. The paper is cold and oily to the touch. I can pay the hotel. Whoa, whoa. Did you see how easy that was? Ask her for more. Toot toot. Train to money town. <sighs> that would be dishonorable. That would be rude. I'm gonna do it. This may seem like odd behavior for a police officer, man, but it's a perfectly common side effect of his. He squints at you. Unusual medical episode. 
It's all right, Lieutenant. <gasps> I really did bring as little cash with me as possible to avoid attention. So here you are. The last bit of filthy lucre I can share. She dips her fingers back into the bag and fish just a, a real. So, I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically illegal under the Emergency Act, but still. I'm still getting my head around this whole money concept. <laughs> Yeah. You're right, ma'am, that donations are permitted under the Emergency Act, uh, unseemly as it may be, as long as they are properly logged with a precinct. Which he most certainly will do. Now, how else can I help the RCM today, besides supplementing its salaries? <laughs> she bows and then raises a single eyebrow in your direction. I'm going to go pay the hotel. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Oh, Kim, you something? Oh, are you just reminding me I can talk to you? Something also happened here. All right, Ace is high. I wanted to do what happened? Oh, the fifteenth Indo tribe research time. No temporary research bonus. Wild pines, felled, tricennial fillers, and names of Revisholian. Indo tribe spring into your head. Set loose the mention of wild pines, royal monopolies, octopuses, and swordfish. Most of them gone now. But isn't one missing? Wait, no. There were only 14. Why do you feel like there was a 15th? So we're trying to find one that was missing. I'm, I'm gonna have to probably buy another slot. Okay. I will come back. I gotta make it back to the hotel and pay them. Oh, I do know you can be what's known as a hobo cop in this game and like sleep. There's there's places you can sleep like, I don't know, in a dumpster or under a boat or something. So you don't have to pay the hotel, but I feel like honestly want to pay the hotel like we wrecked their shit and I feel like they aren't charging us enough for all the damages we did I think I, I just feel like we should we should pay the hotel for the grief that we have given them what's this oh that was the thing it looked like a bag of trash from where it was sitting. Did I look in here? What's this? Yeah, give me that. And I didn't even have to walk down there. Excellent. At least fill back up, because I could have sworn I looked at these. Oh, that's a mailbox. That's not trash. Let's go pay the hotel. And then we can go talk to Kim. Who are you? <laughs> Can I help you? About that money I owe you. Yes. Have you got it? I, uh, how much do I owe you again? A lot. A okay. lot, lot. I have it. Well. Slam the bills down on the counter. I hope you choke on it. No. Sorry for the troubles. Probably gonna make me a sorry cop again. But you know what? I am sorry for the trouble. I feel like I should say that. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. Okay. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. I don't have a lot of money. I have seven real. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. Oh, well, that's good to know. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. Okay. I'll take a room here, too. He opens his wallet. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Nope. Let's go talk to Kim. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, I think, because I... I'm just gonna do it. 
And then I can add that. Do I have any more? Okay, no. Okay, cool. I, why are you colored? Maybe you're colored because it's telling me I put extra points into you. That must be what that is. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. All right, we're gonna talk to Kim on the balcony. Is this gonna be Kim's room? Balcony's outside. All right, we are situated on the balcony, Kim. We should think about calling it a day, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I mean, yeah, but I actually wanted to talk to you. We can pick up where we left off tomorrow morning. No, no, no. I'm not... I'm, no, I don't want to turn in. I actually want to put stuff... <laughs> okay, fine. I wanted to talk to you. We said we could yes. talk. Okay, tell me... You seem to be... Let's let's go ahead and do this. You seem to be following me. Excuse me? What if I want to work on the case alone? Detective, if I may be frank, you seem to be in a deranged state. You have trouble remembering things. You've misplaced your badge. I cannot let you act in the name of the RCM without supervision until you've regained control of your faculties. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're an unaccountable wreck who has to be supervised? You don't have to take this display of authority. You can disobey. I don't want to be rude. That's why I didn't pick this option to begin with. What if I need some me time? Some you time? This is a police investigation, not a journey of self-discovery. You'll still have your evenings to yourself. All right. I'll leave the self-care for non-work hours. Please do. We wouldn't want your regimen to spill over into the investigation. The lieutenant is pretty sure self-care is just a euphemism for nihilistic binge drinking. Still can't check that. Can you tell me about the case again? What do you want to know? Now that we've inspected the scene, I want to know more about this pissing competition you mentioned. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. Oh, well, what kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. So this is a struggle over who runs Martinez? Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. So no one wants it? I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite a brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. Hmm. What's so special about Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. What does it say about me that I was sent by my station? Hmm. <laughs> he raises an eyebrow, thinking it best to let you make the next move. I was sent to teach you a lesson in style. There will be one conclusion. I'm the finest case-solving machine sent out to perform you in every way imaginable. I do have quite the record. It must be an augury. An apocalyptic omen sent by my people. I might have supernatural abilities. I probably have an unbelievable kill count, which we know I don't. I'm gonna... I'm gonna leave why I was sent unspecified. I'm just here to outperform you. Because... I'm going off of my record. I'm not trying to be a douche. A good joke. A good joke. <laughs> he does not actually think it was a good joke. Okay, it was a poor joke. We could use a good-mannered cop-off, don't you agree? A good-mannered one, yeah. I will only moderately humiliate and outperform you. I have no intention to compete with you. How could I compete with you? You probably have a ton of cases solved. 
Um, we could use a good mannered cop off. I hope that that's actually taken. You know, as a good thing. If it helps you work better, okay. See it as competition, but don't expect me to. Now. Oh, I hope I didn't upset him. Was there anything else you wanted to ask about the competition? Um. If not, we should move. Okay, we'll leave it alone. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. He's actually glad it's addressed now. Well, that's good. Why did the precinct send me? Oh. This is a white check. You may retry it. Cool. Let me save. Yes? If my skills are really high. Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. Aww, that makes more sense than the other stuff I thought of. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late and argues with his necktie. You weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck-up? Like, as a joke. I've considered it. <laughs> his voice is somber. But my service record, that can't be true, right? I don't think I can say one way or another. I do think it's somewhat unlikely, though. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. So you see me as a face bet. So you are their finest, you liar. I am the finest of nothing. Uh-huh. I disagree. False modesty. You really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, <gasps> they are in for a surprise. You healed my morale! <laughs> He's right. There are no airtight theories. Just paranoia. You've given it some thought. Now let it go. Kim, you are my best friend. <laughs> you healed my morale, Kim. You're amazing. 